Hello everyone, welcome to the 1000 MCQ series of Pharmacist, Analyst and Drug Inspector exam. Let's start off with the first question of the day. An acidic drug with low VD typically have binding to it. Is it albumin, globulin, alpha-1 acid glycoprotein or none of the above? From the question, we can see that it is an acidic drug and it has low VD. VD means volume of distribution. The VD or volume of distribution is actually a pharmacokinetic parameter. From this, we can determine whether the drug that we are giving will stay in the plasma or it will get into the tissue compartment. The drug will be present in either of these two compartments. So the actual formula of apparent volume of distribution is amount of drug in the body divided by plasma concentration of the drug. So from this we can understand the volume of distribution can be either high or it can be low. These are the two categories. So as you can see here, there are two categories, low volume of distribution and high volume of distribution. Low volume of distribution means they are having a lower volume, they are confined towards the plasma region while high volume of distribution means they, these are highly distributed. Higher concentration of drug is present in the tissue compartment. So for a drug which is confined to plasma, what will be the solubility? It will be more water soluble. But on the other hand, for any drug to get into the tissue compartment, what will be the solubility? It will be relatively liquid soluble in nature. So for any drug that is confined to a plasma, we can effectively remove by using techniques such as hemodialysis. But can we do the same for drugs having higher volume of distribution? No, it is very difficult. Coming to the molecular weight, higher molecular weight drugs. These are usually seen under the category of low volume of distribution, which means they are usually confined towards the plasma because of their higher weight. But the drugs with low molecular weight can get into the tissue compartment and they are seen to have higher VD values. Coming to the plasma protein binding, drugs with low volume of distribution usually show high plasma protein binding such as albumin, globulin, alpha-1 glycoproteins, etc. While the drugs that, that are distributed towards the tissue compartment, these usually have lower plasma protein binding, but they have higher tissue protein binding. So these are the two categories, the low volume of distribution and high volume of distribution. So in our question, we have seen that the drug is having low volume of distribution, which means there will be higher plasma protein binding. Now here in the options, we can see it is albumin, globulin, alpha-1 acid glycoprotein. So from the question, it is acidic drug. Usually, acidic drug will bind to a basic protein, basic plasma protein. And if we classify it according to the abundance, we can see albumin is the most abundant basic plasma protein. So, the answer, the most probable answer for this question will be albumin. Coming to the next question. A typical drug has more binding towards which organ? In the previous question, we analyzed which plasma protein here the question is which organ let's see the options is it liver lungs kidney or muscle please keep in mind the series will be liver will have the highest binding of drugs then comes kidney then lungs and at last muscles why liver because it is high having an extensive blood circulation and it is the main organ where drug is getting metabolized so typically drugs are having higher binding towards which organ towards liver coming to the next question the drug of choice of malaria during pregnancy is it chloroquine doxycycline artemisin or all of them see all these options are all these drugs are used for malaria these are used as anti-malarial drugs but which particular drug is used as a drug of choice during pregnancy? It is a very direct question. The answer is chloroquine. Let's see other options also, other diseases also. For example, antihypertensive drug. What is the drug of choice of antihypertensive drug in pregnancy? It is alpha methyl dopa, 
lebitalol and hydrolysin coming to the antibiotics it is penicillin cephalosporin and erythromycin here we have to note one thing if the patient is having allergy towards the penicillin we should avoid this particular drug and offer other therapy or a combined therapy coming to the anti diabetic drug usually insulin is given anticoagulant it is a very straight forward question the answer is heparin analgesic it is acetaminophen or normal paracetamol the gold standard analgesic anti thyroid drug it is propyl thiouracil coming to the next question gaucher's disease is a genetic disorder resulting from a deficiency in the enzyme is it glucocerebrosidase pingomyelinase ceramidase or all of the above in gaucher's disease there is a deficiency of a particular enzyme because of which the lipid metabolism is not proper and the lipid will start accumulating in organs such as spleen liver etc so this is a rare genetic disorder so which is the enzyme the enzyme is glucocerebrosidase so this is a direct question let's see some of the other genetic disorders also so these are the disorders and the particular enzyme which is deficient in these disorders so in gaucher's disease please note it is glucocerebrosidase the next question is polymorphs in pharmaceutical solids are detected by which technique ms mass spec lcms liquid chromatography mass spectrometry solid state nmr or coulter counter what is polymorph polymorphs are substances that can exist in more than one crystalline form it will have different form and it is very difficult to detect these type of polymorphs because of various challenges for example there can be complexity in the crystalline structures that are formed or there will be overlapping of the peak when we are analyzing it or there will be preferred preferred orientation of these polymorphs environmental sensitivity conformation flexibility all these type of challenges will lead to difficulties in detecting these polymorphs so there should be an ideal method or an ideal analytical tool that we can use so as to detect the polymorphs present in a particular substance right usually for the analysis of polymorphs we use dsc that is differential scanning colorimetry in which we will obtain a dsc thermogram which will be utilized to analyze the different type of polymorphs otherwise what we will be using is xrt x ray diffraction this is a gold standard for polymorphs identification here we will get diffraction patterns so different polymorphs will have different diffraction patterns but in the question we can see these four options are given that is ms spectrometry a color the chromatography and spectrometry combination solid state nmr and coulter counter come to the first option ms that is mass spec here it is mass to charge ratio on the basis of this they are differentiating so whether we will get we will be able to detect polymorphs no we won't be next comes lcms that is chromatography and mass spectrometry combination chromatography is used for separation of compounds but mass spectrography will help us to evaluate based on the mass to charge ratio which will also not be much efficient in analyzing the polymorphs the last option is coulter counter coulter counter is mainly used for analyzing particle size right so the best answer will be solid state nmr the next question is anti histaminic with diphenyl methyl group is is it methylacin cyclosin hydrochloride phenylethamine or all of the above here we have to note it is diphenyl methyl group two phenyl rings are attached by using a methyl group okay so the answer will be what cyclosin hydrochloride let's see the structures this is the diphenyl methyl group two phenyl rings are attached by using a methyl group so as you can see in here in cyclosin hydrochloride in cyclosin hydrochloride we are having a diphenyl methyl group right now coming to the next question in the mass spectrometry the chemical shift delta is expressed in is it parts per million ppm gauche 
Tesla or Hertz. So at first we should know what is this chemical shift delta which is used in NMR spectrometry. So the chemical shift is actually the difference in the absorption frequency. Here we are using a standard that is a TMS. So we will obtain the standard, we will obtain a sample. Now we will analyze the difference between the absorption frequency of standard and sample. So what is the standard here? TMS. The TMS and the sample that we want to analyze. So by this, by, by evaluating the difference, we will get a dimensionless quantity. What will be the dimensionless quantity here? That is the chemical shift. So the chemical shift is a dimensionless quantity. What is the scale that we use here? The scale used is delta. And how we express it? We express by using parts per million or ppm. So this is how we express chemical shift in NMR. Another advantage of using parts per million or ppm is that different machines or different equipments of NMR will have a slight shift in the magnetic field that is reduced. Therefore, if we use parts per million, we will be able to obtain a relatively more accurate measurement by use even by using different equipments so that's why we use ppm or parts per million so here answer will be ppm so the next question is drying of solution by using aerosolization method is carried out by drum dryer tray dryer spray dryer or vacuum dryer so here if we evaluate they are asking aerosolization method right in drum dryer whether we are having aerosolization no it is a moving method a kinetic way by using which we are using a drum and we are carried out the drying process in tray dryer we are using a static process we are keeping the sample in the tray and then drying it in spray dryer we are spraying the sample we are using the method of aerosolization in vacuum dryer what we are using we are using vacuum we are removing all the air from the surface and then we are drying it so the answer will be spray dryer so there are different types of dryers main categories in what static dryers that is static in nature which is not moving for example spray dryers freeze dryers etc then comes moving bed dryer for example motion is there, like uh, the drum the rotation of a drum it is a motion so drum dryer then fluidized bed dryer fluidized bed dryer means in these uh, dryers there will be fluidization of the feed material okay next come pneumatic dryers where we are using air or the air pressure here the example is spray dryer so using aerosolization method the answer is spray dryer okay while if the question comes using fluidization method of the feed then the answer will be fluidized bed dry now moving on to the next question drugs causing gynecomastia a very direct question so the options are spironolactone estrogen digoxin or all of the above the answer is all of the above right always remember gynecomastia the drugs causing gynecomastia is disco that is digoxin isoniazid spironolactone Semitidine, ketoconazole, and estrogen. Disco. Okay. Which anti-acne medication is contraindicated during pregnancy? The isotretinoin, tetracycline, salicylic acid at higher concentrations, or all of the above? The answer is all of the above. Isotretinoin is found to cause defects in the fetus. Tetracycline as we know this will lead to discoloration of the teeth in the fetus. Salicylic acid at higher concentration can cause birth defect. So all these drugs are anti-acne medications which are contraindicated during pregnancy. It should not be taken during pregnancy. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is a Kerala PSC Analyst Grade 3 exam course that is launched by our tutorials and this will help you to reach your dream job.